Hey guys, so I want to talk about the Navisworks switchback function. Uh, it's a tool within Navisworks and Revit that allows you to switch back between uh, Navisworks to Revit. So you can select an element in Navisworks and then jump to it in Revit so that you don't have to manually search those items either by flying through a model or by using um, uh, uh, an element ID. Um, generally what I like to do is use that the switchback tool when I'm reviewing clashes or if other people are using clashes you know it's preferred to use that than to use like a, um, a viewpoint export or some some export out of uh, the clash detective uh, tool within Navis works, you know, dump that out and then manually go through. This is kind of a more seamless integration between the two, two tools since if you're resolving clashes or trying to identify certain items, then, you know, you're working in there and going back into Revit, this kind of helps streamline that or makes it a little bit more seamless than of a, of a more manual process. Um, I mean, this is one way to handle it. In some of my later videos, I'll talk about some other workflows, like when you're resolving clashes, how we can bring that data into Revit. But right now, uh, with the clash or with the switchback function, you can e easily jump to those elements from Navisworks to Revit. So in Navisworks, if you have it open and you select an item, you'll see switchback right here. And you just click on that after you've synced the models together. If you do um, get this prompt, which you may get it depending on how you export out your uh, NWCs. So in this example, it was an element specific to the Navisworks or a specific to the electrical NWC that was uh, appended to the NWF. And that's because in our MEP model, we dump out each discipline as its own NWC so that we can clash against those. And uh, when what it does is it automatically just tries to take that NWC and then connect it to a uh, .rvt. If it doesn't exist, all you have to do is browse out to the model that you're working in. So in this, this example, even though it's just the electrical discipline, I browse out to the MEP model that hosts all those different disciplines and I can still use that switchback function. And then what's nice, is um, it'll allow you to also grab the other elements and you may be prompted from those as well like if you switch to an HVAC element you may get a prompt that says project number dash navis underscore HVAC browse to the MEP model you're fine now this all depends on the way that you break out the model um, and the way your naming structures are set up but if you do get this prompt just remember to go out to the original Revit model that you're dumping out these NWCs. Uh, so there's a couple ways to get to it. So you do have the option to use a switchback function in the Clash Detective window. So when with it open, you select one of the results down here. So Clash 1, you can come down here and select this and it'll orient you to the Clash. You also have the option over here for item 1. So you have this switchback and then item 2 is this switchback. So within Revit, you'll find in the add-ins over here in external tools, depending on how many external tools you have in here, this list may be different, but you'll find Navisworks switchback and then whatever year it's associated with. Since we're looking at Navisworks 2019 and Revit 2019, then we see Navisworks switchback 2019. Um, so this is the bit on just kind of showing you. So when it when you first use that switchback function, it's going to create a 3D view. So Navisworks switchback is what it's called. Over here, you can see one of the elements that I selected. In the next view, here's the element. So I selected that. Use the switchback to jump me to this element uh, in this 3D view. And you can change this 3D view and um, uh, just change some of the visuals so that you know it's something that you're a little bit more used to so I'm gonna close this and we'll jump into it and kind of show you how how it uh, works I'm gonna exit out of this PowerPoint I'll minimize this 
Now I've already got this uh, NWC open or this NWF open and what we'll do is we'll select one of these elements but first before we do that I'll jump into the Revit model which I have open you can see same configuration um, oops I'm going to pause this video and restart Revit alright so I had to restart Revit um, it aired out there and had to restart so with Revit open you can go to your uh, add-ins tab over here to the external tools and then Navisworks switchback 2019 you click on that to enable it we'll jump over to Navisworks and make sure everything did what it was supposed to we'll just grab one of these elements go up here to item tools click switchback we'll get this prompt like I said before if we browse out to the correct MEP model press open and then OK now we can see that it's created a view where it's highlighting that element what we'll do is we'll go over here to under coordination expand this and we can see there's a Navisworks switchback view that's been created if we go back to this I'll show you how you would use this in the clash detective window I feel like this is the most valuable because generally at least in design I mean if you're going to be using Navisworks and you don't already have Inkscape um, and or if you're receiving a bunch of different um, models from different uh, partners and stuff and for whatever reason not using Revit um, you may be using Navisworks a lot more but um, generally if you have Inkscape then flying around a model is easy you, you might just be using Navisworks for Clash and in that case you know getting used to this interface and having people use this to get into and then use the switchback function allows a more seamless workflow than that manual approach of dumping out um, a uh, HTML file that somebody has to go through and search by element ID which is incredibly tedious and uh, generally um, just kinda left there and not progressed um, I feel like or if anything very very inefficient so what we'll do is just we'll select on one of these so we'll say arch arch would be the first item the second item would be over here selection B so we'll go to results and then what we'll do is we'll select on that first one and <clears throat> in that switchback button which is right here this is gonna be item 2 which is gonna be associated with the HVAC stuff so what we'll do is click switchback and down here you can see that uh, Revit has done something if we jump to it it um, has switched that element <clears throat> so it is selected it's just not you can't see it uh, in this view per se but it looks like rooms was clashed for some reason uh, if we jump back to this maybe I can figure that out real quick so rooms should have been excluded but um, regardless you can see how that worked so we'll scroll down maybe find something else in here so this level one clash maybe we can see kind of what's going on let's try to find a clash that's a little bit more visible what we'll do all right so the problem was and I should have known this so I hid the HVAC system since we we're looking at that but um, or I hid the other systems except for the HVAC so that's why we weren't seeing the clashes so we'll unhide the electrical and unhide the plumbing and then we'll go back into these clashes 
make sure that we have hide other on and then let's turn off um, highlight all clashes and then now we have those clash elements we can use the switchback function to grab the second element or we can while we're in this view grab those elements and then use this as switchback as well you know this is the prompt I mentioned as well the HVAC one we browse out to but since it looks like each NWC as thinking it it has its own uh, RVT associated with it that's not the case um, so what we'll do is again browse out to the Revit MEP model press open and then OK and then now it's connected in this here it's um, now selected that element now what we'll do is turn off all the architectural stuff so we can see what's going on so let's jump back over here you switch back again All right, so I'm going to try that one more time because I had generic models turned off. So we'll go back to Revit and we'll see that it selected uh, this here. All right, so it selected it here. So you can see that element there highlighted. Um, just so a tip, kind of horrible that it happened in the video but um, this is actually a pretty nice tip to know when you're selecting elements so there's a hierarchy in Navisworks to keep in mind you can see there's different objects and solids and stuff that you can grab and materials and things like that um, and those do affect what you're actually grabbing in Revit so you can see earlier where it didn't grab those elements now to change that all you would have to do is go to home then under this select and search drop down it was set to last object whereas if we actually select this item item again you can see it actually moves down here which then grabs the element but doesn't um, actually highlight it and grab the specific element um, we actually saw there um, when we were in Revit but if we go back switch this to the first object then we now have the object if we come back here use the switchback function jump back in there we can see that it actually grabs the element so just a good to know and that uh, can apply to other things as well if you jump into Navisworks start grabbing the overall model on accident it could be because you're grabbing the wrong layer of elements um, you know and you can see that it applies here and and when you're using the switchback function as well so that's the bit on the switchback tool um, let me know if you have any questions uh, I like it a lot um, it really helps the process when you're resolving clashes so you can easily you know go from one tool to the other uh, pre pretty seamlessly um, so it, it's pretty nice for that reason so check it out let me know if you have any questions definitely reach out comment uh, subscribe if you want to see more thanks a lot